everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another mod review. It's been a while, but this mod has been in development for quite some time now. Marienburg, the Merchant Empire, which is pretty DLC quality. There are three factions, but something is very different here. One is main faction, which is what we're going to be covering first. And then there's two minor factions. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about and uh, it's a big mod. It's made by tremendous modders. Uh, they've worked on something incredibly special. I barely slept last night because I've been playing this. So, let's talk about this. This is Marienburg, a free nation right next to the lands of Bretonia and the Empire, which declared themselves independent from the Empire a long time ago. What we do know is that Marienburg is quite different to most states, considering that obviously it's a trader nation. There's a lot of different factors, there's a lot of different peoples, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty interesting mod. So we're going to jump right in, we're going to talk about well, everything, really. So let's jump into the faction effects here. The Merchant Empire has no access to elector state regiments, but instead has access to unique Marienburg rights and units. Construction cost minus 20% for ports. Income from trade tariffs plus 10%. Send trade convoys across the world via the Gilded Route and navigate risks en route to reap great financial rewards. Relationship minus 100 to Reichland, so you're going to have a very early enemy. And if we go into the Lord effects, so the character demands a percentage of experience earned by other lords whilst garrisoned in Marienburg. There's a lot of Marienburg mechanics here. Leadership plus one for every arranged trade route agreement for all units in army. And finally, the ability Jan's bribe. Now, when I'm saying that there's a lot to do with Marienburg, it's not because it's a Marienburg faction. I mean, there is a lot to do with Marienburg itself. So we're going to talk about all those different mechanics and you're going to see how unique this faction truly is. The first thing is obviously you know that uh, your start position is Marienburg. It's kind of easy to tell, but this area is going to be quite interesting considering that Reichland is not really in the best relations with you. You do have a minor chaos faction to deal with at the beginning, and there's obviously the Empire, which doesn't really like you. Remember, Nordland won't like you at the very beginning either. Um... Yeah, a little bit of a tough start, I must say, but it's not that bad, especially as you start getting into the advanced areas. When we start looking towards the actual character, this is where he becomes extremely unique. You see, this is not a fighter. This character has a lot of bonuses, which will affect your armies, some of your main stuff. It can even have, like, random events pop up, like, say, for example, having a... Uh, the uh, secessionists do some damage against Reichland. There's so much to this character. He is incredibly unique. And I really, really do like this. So, yeah, you might want to keep your main legendary lord inside Marienburg as much as possible. He is able to move around, don't you worry. Uh, it's just like I said, you can see his stats, right? You can see he's got very low armor. He's an old man. This is all lore-centric stuff, by the way, taken from a very old supplement of one fantasy roleplay, and it's done in such a great way. I'm absolutely in love with how this faction plays out. It's definitely going to be something that I'm going to do like a full playthrough and a stream at some point, because, yeah, there is so much to it. You've even got, like, really good items, too. And we're going to talk about a lot of unique mechanics. The stuff that gets reused, obviously, but in a really good way to make it quite different. But definitely the character itself is just so unique that you really do feel there's a lot to play around with. It could even warrant a second and third playthrough without too much of a problem, I think. The character's unique items are quite good, especially the last one, because you can get a lot of money from ports and all buildings. So yeah, you know, Marienburg is a hub for that, and you want to be able to stay there as much as possible just to be able to siphon as much cash. And you will notice that you will have a lot of money if you play your cards right, which I think is a really big benefit here. So the fun thing here is that rights are a thing here, and really it makes a lot of sense considering that this mod began development, I think, in Warhammer 2. They said it was about a year and eight months or something of development, which is absolutely insane. And uh, yeah, look, you've got some pretty cool ones. You can get Regiment of Renown, Landship. Yeah, Landships are a unit. Another one to focus around Dilemmas, which will cost you some cash. I'm not going to show literally everything of this mod because I want you to discover some stuff. Believe me, it's always really fun when you discover something for the first time. Then there's a big cash bonus here, you know, from Weaving Houses faction-wide, which is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, you've got a little bit of everything. It's definitely something that you're going to want to explore a little bit as you start progressing through your campaign. 
there is literally so much, like for example, getting some uh, merchant houses. This is a bit of a questing system, essentially, taking from the Vampire Coast, and it will give you some reason to go to, say, for example, uh, Norska, Lustria, uh, Estalia, the Border Princess, Ulf One. It's pretty cool because it adds a sense of, yeah, I need to go here, I need to go there. I like that. It gives you a sense of purpose for some campaigns, because even though this is Immortal Empires, which obviously is more sandbox, the Vampire Coast way of doing it, which is subtly including stuff, just makes it a lot more fun for me. So yeah, this works out really, really well. The technology tree is taking from the Empire one, which I think is perfectly fine, as you do have a lot of other modifiers, so having a unique tree isn't really needed. I don't know if one's planned for the future, because obviously every single mod on the workshop can be considered a work in development, as modders do improve upon their own projects. But yeah, if you've played the Empire, and considering the fact that we know the Empire is the most um, played faction in Tales of War, uh, yeah, you should be fine here. Don't worry, the bonuses are all pretty good, and they're all relatively useful to what you want through your campaign. I think that's quite important anyway. But when we start looking to other unique stuff, there is some really, really cool ones. Like, for example, there is the cafe and caravan mechanic, but in a different way. So you see, it's actually quite large. Mostly because it's going through naval passages, so you're not just dealing with, say, for example, just the Empire, but you're able to go to little places in Lustria, Ulf One. Hell, there's even places in uh, Grand Cafe. So you're going to be moving around a lot, and I kind of like this. I think that it adds in a lot of flavor, especially as it can take a while, but you actually feel like, yes, they're traveling through the world. Construction will focus in the same way as the Empire, but then again, it kind of makes sense considering how close they were, and obviously they're a breakaway faction. Well, if you tell that to a Marienberger, they would say that they are actually, you know, independent by choice, blah, 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 blah. You will get access to a lot of the same heroes and so on. The only thing is, obviously, the roster is completely different. There's 30 units or so, and that also includes Regiments of Renown. Uh, there's just so much that is actually added through this mod. You're going to have time to play around with. Uh, the roster is pretty good. We'll have a roster breakdown later on in this video. So don't you worry. It's more about just taking your time and the familiarity, I think, helps you it will be a very big boost to you as you're progressing through your campaign and just um, you know causing some hell essentially but if we start going through the next part you will notice this is a bunch of uh, requests that you'll have access to this is getting to different locations and uh, this is stuff that I've explained a little bit before but it's gonna grant you auxiliaries there's a lot of stuff here which is gonna be able to grant you auxiliaries extra legendary characters too which we won't cover all of them we're just gonna go for the main ones that we can get access to uh, there is so much there is absolutely so much it is overwhelming but in a very very good way you will also start off with a legendary hero if you choose to play as the main Marienberg faction which is quite strong you You've got a few different effects here. He's better off with the main legendary lord, at least that's how I've seen it, but you've got pretty much the damage. If your main legendary lord is the weak one but is the support character, this one is the one that's going to be able to do some damage and boost up your army's capabilities a lot more too. So it's definitely some uh, duo that you want to keep together. And uh, yeah, pretty cool character in all honesty. I love the idea on how varied the legendary characters are because there is a decent amount. There's four legendary lords and seven legendary heroes total. We'll be covering all the lords but not all the heroes as uh, I am kind of pressed for time. Mostly because I've been playing this game um, <laughs> for a long time during the night and yeah you know, distractions. <laughs> and if you're worried about your main legendary lord not being too useful in combat, don't you worry, as you can build up one of the landmarks, it's the final landmark of Marienburg itself, and you'll be able to get access to another legendary lord. This one is quite good, honestly. He's got quite a decent stat pool, he's able to do quite a few debuffs. I kind of see him in a way um, like a witch hunter, but kind of different to... I think he's got loads of buffs, he's, uh, he's also helping with trade tariffs and making your ports better and so on, so you're also getting bonuses there too. You're going to be generating a lot of cash, a lot of the mechanics are tied to just generating a lot of cash. But hey, do you want something a little bit different? Well, there is another faction in the Empire section as you can see here, which is a minor faction, you can see that there. And it's quite unique, so let's just jump right in with the faction effects. This is a minor faction experience may differ from playing with a major faction. Grimoires plus 5 per turn, Winds of Magic, Power Reserve plus 3 per turn for all armies. Convert mortal men to Zinch units using the Warband upgrade system requires the DLC. Yeah, you're going to need uh, Champions of Chaos. 
if you want to play as this faction and get everything for it. Uh, send trend convoys across the world via the Gilded Route and navigate risks en route to reap great financial rewards as access to changing of the ways. And finally, for the Lord Effects, we have the following. Campaign movement range plus 10%. Immune to attrition, all units in army, and spell Blue Fire of Sin Sin. So yeah, you're going to have a little bit of a different theme. Spells might be renamed to fit with the law of Zinch more on the eastern portions of the world. But yeah, pretty fun faction. Very different, very, very different. I only had a very little bit of time to play as this one, as I was mostly playing with a major faction. But you have some variety. You'll start off in Fu Chao, so in the eastern reaches of the Warhammer Fantasy world, meaning that you'll be able to just play around and try something different. You'll be able to have a Marienburg army because you'll be using the Marienburg units, but you know, just somewhere different. A different start position is always quite fun. I like the idea of that. It just adds in a little bit more flavor. Now, when we start looking towards the character, you've got a bunch of different things. So the first thing is obviously you will have the changing of the ways. This is for your faction, your faction alone. And uh, this is stuff that you're already used to. So, you know, Reveal Shroud, Holt Faction, all that type of stuff. Just to give you a little bit of uh, justice planned. This faction will also make use of the convoy mechanic, and from the little I've played, I feel like it's quite useful as you'll be able to get a lot more cash coming in. In general, since you're stuck in an area which is going to be quite inhospitable to you, it does obviously help a little bit. Plus, it is a fun mechanic. I actually really enjoyed the baseline version when we had that for Grand Cafe, so yeah, seeing it more often is great. I really, really enjoy it. And we're going to see that for the Chorfs too, it seems, so yeah, I mean, it's cool. Anyways, when we start looking towards the character, the character is quite interesting because he's a spellcaster having access to spells from the Law of Zinch. In general, he's quite interesting because uh, you can get some pretty good bonuses for your faction. Extra chances of magic item drop chance, uh, getting a few benefits with Cafe, which is going to be useful considering that, yeah, they're going to expand and you're going to have to deal with a death master and so on. And you can even get your units to have Ying and Yang just through a skill point. Uh, that's going to be quite interesting. Keep in mind that it's obviously just for your Lord's Army. But can you imagine getting some Ying and Yang bonuses for Chaos Warriors? Because you can actually get access to some Chaos Warriors. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I really like the system. I think it's quite interesting. and It's definitely really, really unique. I wonder if that can be done with other characters in the future. You never know for, like, say, for example, the Monkey King. I don't think that he'll have the baseline stuff, but he could really have something like this. So the Warband system is going to be a bit different to what you're used to, as you're not going to have every single Zinshin unit. You're just going to be able to have Marauders. You're going to be able to have uh, Chaos Warriors and even Chosen. There's quite a lot for you to play with. I mean, they're terrifying in their own right. Even basic Chaos Warriors are kind of scary, let's be very honest there. And then mixing them up with some gunpowder that you're going to have access to, like, yeah, your faction is going to be very, very tough to deal with. And for the third and final faction, we have the Vampire Counts. Yeah, you can find them here. And yeah, it's a Vampire Count faction, but with a little bit of changes. Again, still a minor faction. So let's go over the faction effects. So the minor faction experiences may differ from playing with a major faction. Establish criminal syndicates in hostile regions. Sell slaves to the highest bidder via rings of slave traffickers. Use lairs, burrows, and tunnels to traverse the underground of the wasteland. Slaves, 50 per turn. Yes, you've got a save mechanic, but it's a little different to what you're normally used to. Leadership, plus 6 when fighting against humans for all armies. And finally, for the Lord effects, we have hero action success chance, plus 10% for uh, all factions, so yeah, faction-wide. And finally, ability shadow walk. So there's a bit more to talk about here too. You'll be starting right next to Marienburg, but you don't really want to go for it unless you're very, very confident that you can win early on into your campaign. You might have to take a little bit of time, but it's a pretty interesting start as it does present something different. Plus, vampire camp factions are all quite fun, especially since, you know, they do have some good quality of life changes thanks to immortal empires. So yeah, we're going to move on. When we move on to the character itself, he is a spellcaster, but he's also able to do quite a lot of damage. He actually kind of looks like the old school BSB character that you used to have for the Vampire Coast armies, uh, Vampire Count armies, uh, where the wings would be there and you had that really, really cool pose. Yeah, one of those models that took a while to paint. I've got it in fine cast and it's just absolutely horrible. But yeah, powerful, fast, able to do quite a decent amount of damage. 
I like him. I really, really do like him. I think he's got a pretty interesting style about him. He definitely looks very, very unique, which is definitely something that is a very big bonus when it comes to these characters. When these modders get to work, it's usually something very, very unique. And I love that. I love these mods, which make it feel like it could be like DLC worthy, right? The really cool thing is you'll have access to legendary heroes too. And uh, yeah, she's quite strong. She's a lore of shadow spellcaster. She gets some pretty good bonuses to boost up the army and you'll want to keep her next to the legendary lord inside the same army as uh, she'll have some skills which will kind of boost up that. And I kind of like the idea of that. It makes it more tied to each other. It's kind of like Vlad and Isabella, uh, which is a quite good theme. I really do enjoy that type of stuff. And since she's available to you at the very beginning, it's not really going to be that difficult to keep her with him. Um, so yeah, you're pretty much golden there. Now, one thing that you will have to notice is that slaves are a thing here. These are slave mechanics that you'll get the usual way, uh, you know, getting into fights, uh, beating enemy armies, all that usual stuff is how you'll start getting your main slaves as a form of currency. And your slaves will be used in the criminal network system, so this is like the Underway, like the Vampire Coast Coves, and yeah, you get some bonuses here, some pretty good bonuses, as long as you have slaves per turn. So you want to keep in fighting, you want to make sure that you just have slaves constantly moving. I like the system, I really do enjoy the system. This is a way for you to spread vampiric corruption, get some extra cash. Uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Something that you might not need later campaign, but early on it could really give you that edge, especially since you're a minor faction and yeah, you're going to be suffering quite a bit. And yes, I did forget, so I'm jumping in right now with an edit. So yeah, there are no generic characters. Uh, what you will do is have the Merchant Lords, which are a new generic version. This is basically for your caravan uh, characters. Uh, you've got loads of bonuses here. There's a lot of stuff that can also help you faction-wide too. So if you are used to playing cafe but ignoring the caravans, that's not going to work for you here. Believe me, you're going to want to use the caravans and keep it quite steady to get as many bonuses as you physically can. You can still ignore it, by the way. It's perfectly fine. But if you want the best, then you're going to want to use this. So now we're going to jump into the roster, and as you can tell, there is a lot of stuff. Keep in mind, this is going to play very similar to that of a Empire army, because, well, that, that makes sense. But there's a lot of things that make it quite different, and I think that that's really going to give you a reason to play as this. I really have enjoyed myself so far. I think that this mod has been a breath of fresh air, which I have really kind of needed. Faction mods, for me, are usually the best ones, uh, because I just really can just spend a whole campaign through it. And I like to go full ham. I don't generally go just to country I tend to try and go for a full continent but yeah we're gonna jump right in there's not gonna be a lot that we're gonna speak about some units like for example right now we've got the militia yeah these are basically your skaven slaves just in human form uh, nothing too special about them but I do feel like they've got something going for them in terms of having a front line which you can just send as chaff the fact that they're anti-large too is also quite useful also, be warned, I'm not going to try and pronounce some things here because uh, <laughs> it looks like it's inspired by Dutch stuff. Obviously, Marienburg is uh, inspired by the Netherlands, but um, I can't speak Dutch, so yeah. Uh, but these seem to be like short spears, fire pokers in a sense, but it is an anti-infantry unit, you know, and charge defense against all is pretty decent. Yeah, low tier, but still better than nothing. At the end of the day, it's unique. It's definitely very, very unique. And I feel like that's actually kind of cool because even though you're going to be using a roster that you're kind of used to, Having some unique stuff is always kind of fun. You can see some basic stuff like we're already used to with the swordsman and we're not going to talk about these for too long because at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's a trooper that you're going to have for your main roster type of stuff, which, you know, humans are humans and that's how it's always going to work for them. Same thing when you start looking towards like free company, we've got these units, but having a unit which is able to vanguard and move around and get a little uh, hit in the side, as even though they're not the best, having a little bit of a skirmishing unit is obviously quite useful. You do get some unique stuff, like for example, Migrated Dwarf Warriors. These are, you know, Dwarf Warriors, but Dwarf Warriors are quite cool because their stats have always been relatively good. You know, it's one of these things that Dwarfs are always just generally quite strong. And uh, I love the color scheme, by the way. Yellow and blue kind of mixes really well together. Something that I wouldn't paint myself, though, uh, in a miniature form, mostly because yellow is... Um, brutal but <laughs> we do have some cool stuff right like for example the um, baggage train this is pretty cool it's basically just a version of a war shrine uh, but the model is so cool I love it I absolutely adore this 
I think it's nice to have something that can buff units too. You've got Encourage there. You've got some other stuff. And uh, uniqueness is a big key with these things. Again, it's just cool factor, right? Cool factor is a big thing. Halberdiers might be seen as a basic unit, but having some armor-piercing anti-large is going to be quite useful, seeing as you're going to be fighting the Empire within a very short amount of time, depending on your difficulty choices. So, yeah, I kind of like this unit. It's pretty nice uh, having stuff that you're already used to, because it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, I can use this like this, I can use this like that. It works out quite well. You will start getting some unique stuff here. So, for example, the Merchant Guild Sentinels. These are pretty cool. Um, Anti-infantry, they're aquatic too. They don't have Vanguard, but they're more than able to move around quite quickly, uh, do a lot of damage. You can use them as a front line. I like them too, you know. It's like pirates. Who doesn't love pirate units, right? Anyone who says they don't is just pretty much lying. And as you can tell, this is just basically the... Uh, melee version, so they, there's a lot of other units that you're going to be seeing now. There's also a greatsword unit, once again, nothing too much to talk about because it's a greatsword. However, you know, greatswords are quite good, especially against Chaos Warriors, and eventually you're going to have to move into Norska, and there's Chaos Warriors there. We're moving on to the range section now, and this is where things get a little bit more interesting, at least in my eyes. So the first thing are archers, right? And these are weak archers. They don't have a lot of armor. Uh, their stats aren't really that great. Even the uh, bow itself, only 120 range, it's not great. But the idea is this is very, very early chaff for you. And even early range is still better than no range, right? You'll start to notice some changes as you start going a little bit further on. Now, there are Satozan Militia, which uh, we all kind of used to because it's a base game unit. Uh, but yeah, Vanguard, a decent melee, hybrid unit, aquatic. These units will last a decent amount of time for you, and you'll see them... But yeah, they're quite useful. You'll see them quite a lot into your campaign, I think. We're not going to talk about crossbowmen too much because they are almost all completely identical to the Empire version, which is perfectly fine. 160 range, that will keep you going for a decent amount of time. We're going to start looking towards the more unique units now because I feel like that's the most uh, interesting stuff. The first is the River Wardens. I really like these. So anti-large because they use like this really interesting type of spear. Uh, they're shielded too, which uh, I think is... Yeah, yeah, it's on their back. They've got Vanguard, they've got a handgun. Yeah, very multi-purpose. And you're going to see a lot of multi-purpose units for Marienburg, which again is going to make sure that you're going to be up and running for a decent amount of time now. And um, yeah, I kind of like them. I think the design is really cool. I love the weapon. And I think... I know it's not like the best stats, but like, you know, cool factor again. Migrated Quarrelers are a thing here, and yeah, Dwarf Quarrelers, but with great weapons, you know those are pretty powerful, those are pretty strong overall, so being able to have a few in your army could help you out, but plus, you know, they're fancy, look at their armor, right? They look just like, just tiny Imperials, who doesn't like that? But yeah, Quarrelers are pretty good. Anyways, like, they are a pretty beasty tier unit. Crossbows, but also with great weapons, like, yeah, and with the resilience of Dwarfs, uh, <laughs> you can't really go too wrong with that, can you? There's a lot of different units here, and you will see that it's a lot of power here. So we do have some basic type of uh, trooper here, which is basically just a handgun variant. 145 range, armor piercing, you know, stuff that you're already kind of used to. The look is really, really cool. I love this. This is just such an awesome look for the unit. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about this because obviously it's very similar to just the handgunners. There's literally so many to talk about. I'm trying to keep this video around 30 minutes, not be too long. Uh, but yeah, ship crew gunners, these guys are cool. Uh, mostly because they can vanguard too. So they're a firing unit, 135 range. Uh, so it's not the best. But, you know, the fact that you've got a gun crew that can actually just vanguard, it's pretty tasty. You can move those around, get them into position quite easy, especially early on. The last range unit is the Privateers. So this is a close quarters unit. So they're able to shoot. Not a lot of range, but mind you, actually for a handgun, 90 is pretty good. Uh, but they're able to do a lot of damage in melee too. Uh, so yeah, hybrids are really cool. I like hybrid units. I think that we've been getting a lot of them, obviously, with Kizev officially. And I kind of want to see more hybrid factions coming into effect with a lot of hybrid units. Uh, they're a little strong, let's be honest. But um, they're fun. So, yeah. Plus, it's a campaign-based game, right? So, like, who cares? 
there's going to be a decent amount of cavalry units too, because, well, you know, cavalry is always kind of useful here. We're almost near the end of the roster. The first off is some riders with crossbows. So you've got a vanguard unit that can fire. Actually, two of your rider units are able to vanguard, which I think is going to be good for, well, you skirmish players. Because skirmish units are fairly popular. So you've got the range one with 160 range, which isn't too bad. And then you've got a melee one. The melee one isn't too bad either. Uh, it's shielded too, so you get a little bit of a push there. They don't have shields. I'm not sure if that's an animation issue or something because that does happen with this type of stuff sometimes. So it could just be my mod kind of having an issue there. But yeah, good stuff, right? These ones are super, super cool. The Sons of Manan. So like, look at them, right? They, the color scheme is just really, really nice. Tridents as weapons, magical damage, very good armor. Like they're shielded also. Uh, good stats, like literally good stats all around. I absolutely love how these units look it's one of these things where you know it might not be the most interesting thing to some people but to me it's like i love knightly orders i've always loved knightly orders uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where you just want to have loads of knightly orders you can see that here with the knights of the cleansing fame a flame uh really really cool fire damage and all that type of stuff you've got like a little uh effect with them so you can choose when to have that going it's so cool. I love the design. When they go on nightly order stuff, I absolutely adore nightly orders. I used to like kit bash my own miniatures like this too. So yeah, it's so cool. And you see that also with the Knights Mariner, which are a Griffin Rider unit, which I kind of think is kind of cool. You kind of need that for the Empire, I think. Well, Bretonia could do with a few better ones too, but uh, I think this would be kind of cool for the Empire. So not a lot of units, not a lot of entities, but they're a siege attacker. They fly quite fast. It's just good to have some aerial supremacy, and this is what you can imagine anyway when you're moving around with ships anyway. Actually, if you go back to the Man of War period or Warhammer Gaming, yeah, you used to have um, griffins that you'd use to attack other ships too, so this actually does make a lot of sense. There's not much to talk about in terms of artillery. You have access to a mortar, a light cannon and a heavy cannon, all of which are very useful to you if you do a lot of siege combat. But that honestly depends on your playstyle. I generally mostly use mortars. I don't use cannons too much. I don't find them too useful, I think. But that could just be me not using them correctly. Uh, but then again, I kind of shied against them in the tabletop too because, you know, misfires were a thing and then boom. But yeah, overall, you've got a little bit of option here just to play around for whatever you need as a purpose. The big thing, however, is obviously going to be the Marienburg landship, which is absolutely awesome. I love this so much. I believe this was Chaos Robbie's thing. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's the landship, man. Who doesn't want a Marienburg freaking landship? It is one of the most impressive miniatures that were ever released by Games Workshop. It is so hard to get one nowadays. By the way, it'll cost you, like, a grand and a half. And I mean, like, real money. Like, it's very, very expensive. Um, <laughs> but it is so cool. And it's, like, multi-purpose. It's incredible stats. You definitely want one of these in your army, believe me. They are so good. And we're near the end here, so I've got a randomly generated army for myself, which probably not the best loadout. I haven't really used the caster a lot, plus I'm fighting against a randomly generated corn army. Um, so probably a caster was not the best option here. <laughs> but uh, let me just talk to you about the mod as we progress with the battle. I absolutely love this mod. I think this is a really, really fun mod. You can obviously tell that a lot of talent went into this, and it's just so cool to see... Um, just Marienburg, right? Like, I'd love to see Marienburg as a official DLC in the future. But the fact that we don't have it just yet, at the very least, brings in the opportunity for a massive collective of incredible modders to just have a lot of fun. And yeah, this is very obvious here. Like, if you go on the Steam page, which, by the way, this mod will be linked in the description below, and you should definitely try it out. Scroll down to the credits, you can see all these big names in the modding scene taking part together, and I think that's so cool. Honestly, it shows a level of community there, and it shows that many people's talents could make something absolutely incredible. I like this. I know a lot of people don't like uh, human factions too much, which is kind of weird, well, that's the common saying that, but I know for a fact, we all know for a fact, that the Empire is one of the most commonly played factions in-game. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is a human faction which is very similar, but also very different. And I think that is a massive benefit to this. 
You guys are going to want to try this, trust me. Still a while until we get the Chaos Dwarves, so you might as well have a little bit of fun. Until then, guys, let me know what you think about the mod in the comments below. I am incredibly stressed because, as you can tell from the sound of my voice, I am running late for like 50 million things at the same time. But I'll see you all again soon, and have a great day, guys. But also, I just remembered, if you're interested, I should, in theory, hopefully my internet connection actually works properly today, uh, be streaming the new Warcraft mod for Crusader Kings 3 if it releases on time today on twitch.tv slash the great book of grudges uh just in case you know we don't just do warhammer there's going to be a lot of warhammer but uh there'll be a bit of everything and you know a little plug goes a long way ah! crossbowmen the empire and jaws Sigma calls! Quick march! Very well! To the Emperor! For the changer of ways! Don't give them an inch! Conjure! Moving! Ready! for war! We are many! Load it, sir! Moving now! Launch! Great cannon! Run! The ground quakes! Crossbow ready, General! Ready, sir! Many eyes shall see! Change, deceit, power! Our weapons are yours! Your orders? France! Sigma, guide our fire! Ready! Sigma calls! The cult is ready! Awaiting orders! Armed and ready! We are Sigma's heirs! Charge! of Sinch. Great cannon! With... Ready! Tank the ground! The Empire endures! We are Sigma's heirs! We serve France! Us. On your word! 